Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and I talk about my life in Brisbane on this channel along with any travels and any current topic. I really enjoy putting together my travel videos from my trip to Malaysia in March. And at this point of the travel videos, I'd like to talk about bringing food and drink in your luggage or carry on into Australia. I thought this would be a good time to talk about that because it's quite possible that while traveling, we want to purchase local items and that sometimes includes food. So Australia has very strict biosecurity laws and the process during arrivals at the airport can be quite stressful. The advice that I got all those years ago when I first moved to Australia was that not even to bring anything that could be considered food. I don't apply that quite so strictly now because the Australian Border Force has a list on their website where they detail their requirements for each category of food or drink. So when I was in Malaysia, I was buying things like chocolate, juices, biscuits. I also bought three-in-one sachet coffee. I bought flavored tea bags. I also bought a, a pack of instant Sarawak laksa. So I did all this without checking the Australian Border Force website. So I was sort of buying blind. I didn't know what I could bring back into Australia without any issues, which resulted in some stuff having to be left behind. I left it with my family. And that included the pack of instant straw laksa, which is a shame because I wasn't able to try. It was recommended to me and they said it was pretty close to getting straw laksa in the cafe. So I wasn't able to try that. And that's because it had animal product on the ingredient list. So that's one thing that the Australian Border Force has listed on their website, which when I checked today, it was current which had been updated at, in January 2023. And one of the things that I read on the website while I was in Kuala Lumpur is that the, th the items that, that we are allowed to bring in have to remain in their packaging. So the packaging, when you bought them in the shop, is basically how they have to remain until you're clear of the airport arrivals process. So I'll just show examples of items I was able to safely bring in but keep in mind that of course I've been back in Brisbane for a while and I've opened these items and <laughs> as you'll see I've eaten half of the cookies or more than half so these aren't in their original packaging so I'm trying to say so this I picked up Strawberry's caramel latte I saw this at a grocery store called Mercato, I think it was, and I thought, oh, we don't have this in Australia. And that's the kind of stuff that I look out for, items which I don't see available in Australia. And I was just curious, there are other brands in Australia that sell caramel latte sachets, but this is the one that, I, that caught my eye while I was in Malaysia. And for these, they have to remain in their original packaging commercially sealed so and this one of course has been opened but i'll show you all anyway so they come in these sachets and there is a requirement regarding individual size sachets on the australian board of course website regarding bringing in three-in-one coffee and i also brought back a big jar of peanut cookies. So things like cakes and cookies, I was surprised were okay to bring back. I always thought it was a bit iffy, but again, they have to arrive in Australia with you in this sealed commercial packaging. So at the time this is all sealed and yeah, no issues with this one. 
So I'll just show you the peanut cookie. <laughs> really happy that I at least got to bring something from Malaysia back because these local cookies, I don't see them sold in Brisbane. If they are sold and you know where they're sold, please let me know. And the other thing I brought back is green tea. So cherry blossom green tea. And when it comes to flavored teas, uh, it's the same requirements on the Australian Border Force website. So in their original commercially sealed packaging. So at the time this is all sealed, but it's open now. And I've been really enjoying this tea. Mm. Smells so good. I see the bags there. I'll take one out to show you. I see the loose leaf. Mm. So this brand, I don't... Harvey and Sons Fine Teas. This brand I don't really see here in Brisbane. So that was why it was attractive for me to try and bring back into Australia, which I was able to do. So when you're on the plane and your arrival airport is in Australia, the flight attendants will go around passing out these arrival cards. They're like a little cardboard rectangular document with details you have to provide as part of the arrivals process. So it includes things like your name, your address, if you're a returning resident, and also the items that you're declaring. So declare everything, that's the best way. And it's worse if you don't declare and then they find out at the airport that there was something you didn't declare. I believe the penalties are quite harsh if that's the case. For example, this. If I had arrived at Brisbane airport and they had an issue with the peanut cookies, I think the worst that could happen is that they just take it away. So that's not as bad as I tried to hide that I had peanut cookies in my luggage and they found it. So that form has to be filled by everybody arriving into Australia. And the process at Brisbane airport on my return here was really quite long. So be prepared for an hour or more of processing time because you land and then there's always that time lag between landing and actually getting off the plane into the airport. And then there's the walk from the gate to the passport area. So in Brisbane, there are machines and I noticed some people using them, but I usually have issues with my Malaysian passport, so I didn't bother. And then I got to the main arrivals area and there was a set of machines that I had to try anyway. So, <laughs> but at least there was a witness, a witness of the staff, a witness from the staff who saw that the machine kept on rejecting my passport. And once I was rejected at the machine, and I wasn't the only one, there was like a little queue of people whose passports had been rejected by the machines. So you have to join the queue for someone to manually check your passport. So I joined that queue and it was all fine. Once I was in that queue, it was pretty fast. And then there was the wait for luggage. So by the time I got out of the immigration area, the luggage had just started to come out on the carousel belt and that was annoying. There were so many people and it wasn't just our plane that had arrived. There was another flight that had arrived from Singapore around the same time and I think another flight from Japan maybe. So there were three plane loads of people being processed and also collecting the luggage. So I got my luggage, I was really tired by this time and I wanted to put it on one of the trolleys but I couldn't lift it up. Like the trolley is, the area on the trolley where you can place your luggage is quite high up. So there's a wheel and I think it's quite high up and it slopes a bit downwards. And I really struggled to get my luggage because the luggage out lifted up, part of it would hit the trolley and the trolley would move. So I tried for a while and then I gave up. So I, 
went back to just dragging my suitcase along with me. So then I joined a queue for the, the customs check. And here you still have your arrivals document. And at immigration, the gentleman had asked me a couple of questions and then made some marks on the card. And I think they mean something to the person in that second queue or the third queue for me as to which line they would put me in. So there's multiple lines that they can put you in. First line being, go ahead, no problem. Or go ahead, we don't need to look at anything you're bringing in. Second line is going through the scanning machine, I believe. And then the third line turned out to be forming a line with other passengers and having a little, well not little, having a dog come and sniff our luggage. <laughs> So the dogs are really cute. So that was a that was fun to watch. It perked me up because I was so exhausted by this stage and really over this convoluted process, which I understand we have to go through, but it's a lot to do when we've just come off a long international flight. And at at least two t points, I was asked, "What what do you ha what are you declaring?" And I say, "Instant coffee in the sachets, cookies." and tea and i remember the lady who was in charge of the dog she asked me is everything in commercial packaging so by this time the dog had sniffed all of us in that line and hadn't given any signal that there was anything of concern in our luggage so at this point i think they decide whether they want us to open up the luggage i guess if they've notice something suspicious, they might ask us to open up our luggage or whether they let us go through. So I was asked that question and I said, yes, everything was still in their commercial packaging from the shop and I was allowed to exit into the arrivals area of the airport. So I'm sharing that with you because I think, I think Australia has one of the strictest arrivals processes in any of the international airports I've ever arrived at. It can be quite a shock. And the best advice I can give you is to be patient. It's best to cooperate and just go through the motions of the process that the government has asked us to do. Everybody goes through it. I didn't see any evidence of favoring one group of people over another. Uh, being easy on one group and being harder on another group, for example, it's just a process that they have to go through because they've decided to be quite strict on what sort of products we can bring into Australia. The other thing to remember is that the 100 mil liquid limit is still in place. And I noticed on the Australian Border Forest website that juices are allowed into Australia but I think almost all, if not all, juices are packaged in bottles or cartons of more than 100 ml. So that might be something, if you're super keen on a particular juice, to pack in your luggage. But it could be risky because it's liquid and with all the bouncing around in cargo, it might leak. And if you're migrating to Australia and you think you might miss something from home, if you're moving to one of the larger cities, there are multiple Asian grocery stores which sell items from home. So near me, there are a couple and they sell like, I'm from Malaysia. So if I was homesick for Malaysian stuff, they sell Malaysian Maggie Mee, which is different from the Maggie Mee, which tastes different from the Maggie Mee sold in Australia with English lettering. This one is with Malay lettering and instructions and yeah it tastes a bit different even though they're both chicken flavored and they sell things like yos, drinks and indomie 
and Kopiko. <laughs> so there's a high chance that this snack or food item that you want is available in the stores here and you don't have to worry about bringing them with you on the plane. And one thing I learned which is interesting on the Australian Border Force website is that rice is completely not allowed. Raw rice. So it would never occur to me to bring raw rice anywhere with me at the plane. But yeah, it's completely not allowed and that's quite interesting. I did hear that Australia does produce its own rice. So maybe it's something to do with the species of rice and they don't want a different kind of species into Australia. So the only time I've had something not exactly taken from me at the airport, but they they did they did return it. it was when i was flying back from auckland and i arrived in sydney airport and they said have you been on a farm and i can't remember what the time frame was was it in the past 14 days or something i don't remember but i had been on a farm i had gone to <laughs> i think i looked at some sheep but yeah i had been on a farm and they said what are the shoes that you wore on the farm and i was wearing those shoes they were a leather pair and they took them off me and washed them so they came back almost completely soaked and these were leather shoes so i was very sad about that lesson <laughs> learned where well don't go to a farm if you're going to return to australia it's not it's not worth it and there must be something in the soil that they're looking out for because the lady said oh we just had to clean the shoes and one time when I was flying back to Adelaide, I actually brought some Sarawak laksa paste for a friend of my parents. And I was surprised. I thought, I'll give it a try. Uh, I think it was only one pack, so it wasn't too heavy. And I was like, well, I'll give it a try, but I'm not sure that they'll let it in because I think there's animal product in this paste. I'm not sure, but I thought maybe there was maybe some shrimp and and I opened my luggage and the, the officer said, oh yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> so I was really surprised. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, I was able to bring in a pack of Sorrel Laksa Pace. So how has your experience been if you have arrived at an Australian airport with food in your luggage or carry-on? What was the process? Did you find it as tedious and annoying as I do? And let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to know and maybe we can learn from each other. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got this far, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!